everybody. Welcome to another episode of Nerdy Bacon. We have something a little bit different going on today. So today, actually, what we're doing is we're actually going to be testing out and making our own version of the Starbucks pumpkin cream cold brew. Now, last year, my favorite drink at Starbucks was that pumpkin cream cold brew. The problem is, since then, I've gone keto, and that isn't quite in my diet. It takes up my entire day's allotments of carbs in one drink. So we decided to try doing the keto version of it with a little bit lower sugar, lower carbs, done in a little bit different of a way. Yes. So um, what we'd use two different kinds of milk and one uses pumpkin spice um, extract versus actual pumpkin spice, the powdered kind. And um, so We'll get to those in a few minutes in the recipe videos. Exactly. So if you want to see exactly how we made these and you want to see which one we like better, stick around. Okay, everyone. So for our ingredients, and I'm sorry it's a little bit fuzzy, we will need some pumpkin if you can get organic, but just make sure it's the pumpkin and not pumpkin pie mix. For ours today, we'll be switching between the pumpkin spice, powdered spice, and also trying a pumpkin spice extract. We need Lakanto monk fruit sweetener. You can use the classic, you can use the golden, either one works. We're using some organic coconut cream from Trader Joe's for one of the recipes. And then we will be using the vanilla unsweetened protein milk that's almond and cashew, but you could also use the unsweet vanilla almond milk. Both of those are very low in carbs. We have our cold brew that we make from home, but you can either do homemade or you can buy some at the store, or you can just make some really strong coffee and let it cool and use it at cold for that. That also works. It might have a little bit more bitterness than the cold brew, but I know that um, a lot of people really don't mind it. And the next one is not just bourbon. It's bourbon and um, vanilla beans because I use that to make my homemade vanilla extract. So while I guess you could put bourbon in here straight, this is our homemade vanilla extract. So here we have our almond protein blend already set up in a saucepan and we have it going over medium heat and we're going to let that heat up just a little bit before we add the other items in but make sure that it does not boil so here we have the ingredients that we're going to use for this first batch we have a tiny pinch of salt because salt just helps things taste better because it's a flavor enhancer we have two teaspoons of vanilla extract. We are using a vanilla flavored milk for this with the protein milk, so you could possibly leave that off if you want. I find that more vanilla in recipes tends to make it taste a little bit sweeter as well. We have the teaspoon or just under a teaspoon of the pumpkin spice extract, one tablespoon of pumpkin puree, and then a half a cup of the Lakanto monk fruit sweetener. I used a teeny bit underneath. It usually doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but this does turn out to be instantly sweet. So if you decide you want to do even um, maybe a third cup or something, then that would be fine. But it does get watered down some since you add it to the coffee. So I would say try this first if you want to, although you can make it with the um, one third cup because it's not like you can't always just add more sugar to it if you want it a little sweeter. Once our milk is steaming, we're going to mix in the monk fruit sweetener. And then we will also add in the pumpkin and make sure you get as much as you can out of the spoon or out of whatever. Then add in the pinch of salt and we're going to want to stir. We don't want this again to boil. We just want this to melt the, um, the sugar and the salts so that they're going to incorporate well into our pumpkin cream. 
So we're going to just keep stirring that over a medium heat until we feel that we don't have any more of the granulars um, scraping against the pan or anything. So however long this takes. After we finish stirring the pumpkin cream, when we feel everything's incorporated, we're going to take it off of the heat and we're going to add in our vanilla extract and our peppermint spice extract. And we're going to continue to stir it for a minute or two. And then we're just going to set it off of the heat and leave it to cool down. For the second recipe that we're making, we're using pretty much the same thing that we used for the first one, with the exception of we're trying the organic coconut cream from Trader Joe's, and we're using a teaspoon of the pumpkin spice mix. Um, the spice mix, so not like pumpkin spice, pumpkin pie mix, but the actual powdered mix in place of the extract and we're going to see how those work. So then we are doing the same thing as we did before. We let the coconut milk heat up in the pan on medium heat, and once it starts to get a bit warm, we're gonna add in the monk fruit and the salt, and we're going to add in the tablespoon of the pumpkin's puree, and then we're just going to stir and make sure that it all gets mixed together and that our sweetener and our salt melt into it. We're also going to add in our pumpkin spice mix right here. You can either use the store-bought pumpkin spice mix um, or you can mix together your own. I know there are several recipes on Pinterest and stuff that tell you how to mix together amount that you want. And that way, if you find some are too cinnamony or too clovey or maybe even too spicy with the nutmeg, you can adjust it to what you would like. So we're just gonna keep stirring this and make sure that everything gets mixed in together. And then at the end, we're going to take it off of the heat once we feel everything's melted and we're going to add in our vanilla extract. So using the pumpkin spice powdered mix as opposed to the extract has an extra step because you will want to strain it to get out the bigger clumps of the spice. So this does let a lot of the cinnamon still come through since cinnamon's usually finer, but it catches a lot more of the clove and the nutmeg. So just use a fine mesh strainer and pour it through that once it's cooled down a little bit. And then give it a few minutes for it to sink through. And here you can see that we have filtered out quite a bit of stuff with the strainer. I actually didn't think it would catch that much, but it filtered out quite a bit of um, the extra spices that you may not always want to have in your drink. And here's our finished coconut cream, pumpkin cream sauce, I guess. It's not really a syrup, so I would probably consider it a sauce. And now we're just gonna let it cool and we're going to put it into the fridge. The one thing I'm going to say about this is the fact that since it's pumpkin cream, pumpkin cream has a little bit more fat, so it sets up to sort of a snow creamy consistency once it's been in the fridge. I do like the flavor of coconut with pumpkin, so I would suggest if you want to to use either the coconut uh, milk that just comes in the carton the unsweetened kind, or you could also just use the canned coconut milk as opposed to the coconut cream. So it should also have a little bit better carbs and a little bit better calories if you use pumpkin cream. I just wanted this one to be pretty decadent because you can also use half and half for it, which half and half sort of has its own 
creamy sweetness of its own, and I wanted to try to replicate that a little bit more with the coconut, but like I said, that did mess with the consistency. So it depends upon if you want to have something that is sort of a richer coconut pumpkin taste, which I liked, um, but then you also have to deal with the fact that it does set up a little bit. So for our pumpkin cream froth cold cream, we just took our frother. We have one of these electric froster, frothers and they have a feel line on the inside as to how much you should put in it. We put a little bit of our protein based one in and it frothed up really well. And we also put in a little bit of our coconut cream based one. We had to run that twice because the coconut cream one had set up so much from being in the fridge. So we ran it once on the hot to sort of melt it and then once to try and froth it up again, but it didn't really froth it that much. So it did taste sweet and it was good, but it didn't froth up as much. So I would recommend the almond one to froth better. This could be because of the temperature of it, but I've also noticed that items with lower fat tend to froth better than the higher fat ones. All right, and now to see which one of those recipes turned out better. On my side, I have the coconut cream with the pumpkin spice um, from the, the powder. And on mm -hmm. his side, he has the pumpkin spice extract and the almond cashew protein milk. Exactly. We used an unsweetened vanilla cashew Almond, almond protein milk blend. Mm -hmm. All right. So we also did it a couple of different ways. These here in the center were actually done with a frother. Now, one thing we found was when we did the coconut cream, we let it cool after we made it. And then put it in the fridge. And put it in the fridge. Once it sat in the fridge, though, it set, um, it set up. It actually became a little bit more solid. So when we put it in the frother, we actually used the heating setting on the frother. I'll show which frother I used and put a link to it in the comments below, in the description below. But by heating it up, it actually made it a quite a bit more liquid. So it actually filled in a lot better at that point. But it didn't actually froth. It just made it a little, little bit more liquid. Yes. The other one, the almond cashew blend, as you can see, actually frothed up quite a bit. Yeah. So if you really like that froth, I would certainly kind of go with that. <laughs> go with that version. You can hear Jameson sitting right here off camera eating some crackers. Eating his crackers, exactly. And coloring. All right, so what, should we try this one? First? Well, you definitely get, it doesn't have an extremely kick you in your face kind of pumpkin spice flavor to it. But honestly, the Starbucks one, depending on where you went, didn't either. It has a really nice subtle pumpkin flavor, but that cold brew really comes through nice and, nice and strong, which I kind of like. I'm a real big, just straight cold brew kind of fan. Yeah, traditionally, um, Starbucks for pretty much all of their cold foam ones. The cold foam is the only thing that's flavored. Mm -hmm. So if you want the actual cold brew to have anything, any flavoring after you finish the cold brew, you need to have them put that in separately because otherwise once you're done with the cold foam portion of it, it's just a regular cold brew, which isn't too bad because a lot of times their cold foam is very sweet. Wow. Um, so some people would let, prefer to have something that's more bitter or just mm -hmm. regular after they finish the cold brew instead of having something sweet all the way through. Exactly. So I, however, usually want something sweet all the way through, so I would have them put something in it. Exactly. So if you're one of those pumpkin spice latte fans where you want it sweet all the way through, this might not be the best option. Yeah. This is okay. It's okay? Yeah. Well, let's switch and try. Okay. That one's the coconut cream one. Yeah. It blended more with the coffee. 
Yeah, the coconut cream one definitely blended more with blended more with the coffee. You don't have quite have that separation, but it seems like the coconut cream one is actually a bit sweeter. Um, it holds up a bit more, and every once in a while you get a little bit more of a hit of how of the sugars and sweet and stuff like that. Whereas the almond milk one seems seems a bit lighter. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely separated more. So you get more, very similar to Starbucks, where you get the cream that stays more um, on its own, and then you get the co the coffee underneath. Exactly. Now with these here, what we did is we did not froth it and just kind of pour, just kind of poured it in. Because of this, as you can see, that it really did start to blend with the drink itself. So again, I have the almond milk. Almond cashew one. Yes, you have the protein version. If in case you want to do a protein milk. That actually tastes quite a bit different. That one, it really blended through with the entire drink itself, I find. Yeah. And it seems to have um, a aftertaste that's very strong of cinnamon. It does. Curious to see how that one comes out. See if that's something about the milk or not. I have to use the protector on here, otherwise I'm really bad to hit the metal straws against my teeth. Hmm. Oh, that's kind of nice. Between the two of them, if you're not frothing it, I kind of like the coconut milk one. It seems a bit thicker, seems a bit creamier. The mm -hmm. flavor seems to come through a bit more as well. Now, this one's still really good. If I hadn't tried this one, I would absolutely love this. But that one definitely seems to be a, my yeah, favorite. I would almost say if you wanted to do a frappuccino, this would be a good one to, yes. to blend up with the ice and maybe a little bit of xanthan gum to try and stabilize it. But this one definitely has a sweeter taste. I find that coconut blends a little bit better with pumpkin spice and pumpkin for me. Um, almond and cashew do fine with it as well. But pumpkin to me really goes well with coconut. It does. It has a really nice taste. Yeah. And like I said, it just seems to fit a little bit better. It just seems to blend a little bit better. Yeah. And this one, we did have to microwave it for a tiny bit. Um, the milk that we made, the pumpkin cream with the coconut, just because it does come into my, almost like a solid icy pudding or like a slushy-ish um, ice cream. I don't know if anybody's mm. ever made um, snow cream, but it's kind of like that consistency to where you have the snow mixed with some cream and some sugar. It came out as sort of an icy slushy type of I bet it'd be really good just on its own for anyone who's really a pumpkin spice fan. Might be a bit overpowering, but I bet it would be really tasty. It probably would be, but considering it's made with coconut cream, the carbs are quite a bit higher than there were for this one. So That's a good point. We used a quarter cup of each of the um, things each of the in each blends. of the blends yeah. for it. So this has a quarter cup of the cream pumpkin or uh, the coconut cream one and this has a quarter cup of the other one for it but of course that is something you can mix at your preference so like this even turns out a little bit sweet so we could probably use um you know just two tablespoons mm -hmm. or somewhere like in there but speaking of the entire carb side of it here this the almond cashew almost comes down to no carbs at all technically there's about one carb but for the cup of almond yeah, cashew. Yeah, for one cup, it's one carb. So if you're only using a quarter of a cup, it comes out to less than one carb. So most people don't even count that. The coconut milk, the coconut cream, sorry, is a quite a bit different. For one cup, it is, um, I'll have to check it. I'll add all the information in here below. Yeah, we'll add the macros it, below. Yeah, this well, one, when when you come down to like just using a couple tablespoons, it's not too horrible. No, but this it's only one a definitely carbs, had, but... has less carbs than this one. Exactly. With that said, if it's a treat, if it's not my drink that I'm drinking all day, every day, I would honestly go with the coconut cream. I kind of like it a bit better. I agree. And I'm not really the biggest pumpkin spice 
I'm not a pumpkin spice latte person. I'm more the mocha caramel thingy that they come out with. <laughs> type yeah. of person. <laughs> I'm not a huge pumpkin spice latte fan because for me, it's just, it's good, but it's just a lot of sugar. It's a lot of sweet, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I like the pumpkin cream cold brew because you have that mix of sweet and bitter with the cold brew itself. And that's why I kind of like these. Yeah, I agree. All right. So overall, I think both of them are two, th are two thumbs up, but again. Yeah, I think I they're got... both good. I like this one way better for frothing. Yes. I almost think that you would make both of them and use a little bit for your coffee portion here and then froth some of the other one and put on top. That's and actually that not a bad idea. And that would be really good. So. Do that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyways. So if you've tried making this or if you have your own versions of them, certainly let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, hit that bell icon, like, subscribe. And we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.